Help, I'm in a secret relationship is a show that focuses on couples who are together, they're engaged or they're married. They are apparently allegedly very deeply in love, but they're hiding massive secrets from their partners. The show also focuses on friends, but one of the people in the pair, in the little duo here, feels as if they're being hidden, so they write into the show for help. Ronnie Jones and Travis Mills host the show, and I have to say they're a great duo. I think their dynamic works really well together. It seems like they feed off of each other well. The chemistry seems good. Now, I have to say, this show is messy messier than catfish and that is saying a lot it first aired on april 26 2022 so it's a fairly new show and they don't even have their own youtube channel mtv just posts them on the catfish channel knowing that the messy people who like catfish are the messy people who will also like help them in a secret relationship so that means that you will also like this show today we are diving into the max and matt episode which is season two episode 11. Max, who lives in Chicago, wrote into the show because his childhood best friend, Matt, has been hiding him for the past two years. Already off to a messy start here, okay? Max says that they became good friends in about the fourth grade and they've known each other for about 25 years. They've been inseparable ever since. They're really close. Apparently, they're like brothers and they tell each other more than they tell anybody else. Well, not anymore they don't, but they used to. Max says that... A huge part of their relationship is their creative synergy, which sounds like some hippy dippy shit if I ever heard it. The nature of our relationship is to create. They love to create together, but that is no longer happening. Matt has stopped showing up to their studio sessions, and then Max begins to cry and say that that's heartbreaking. The drama this show is already starting off with is crazy. You're crying because your best friend doesn't come to your studio sessions anymore? Be fucking for real. Are you okay? Are you secretly in love with Matt? Our hosts, Travis and Ronnie, they head over to Max's house, or as the show calls him, The Hidden. What's up? And I'm Ronnie. Nice to meet you, nice Ronnie. To meet you hey too. man, I'm Travis. Nice to meet you, Travis. You so dramatic. They get right in and down to business. Travis asks him, Your best friend and, and how you two met and kind of what's been going on. Max says that they were extremely close, that he has an older brother, but he's always thought of Matt as more of a brother. This is an insane statement to make. I feel like I would be heartbroken if I watched the show and heard one of my sisters say some shit like this. We're fighting. Immediately. Max says that he was in a really serious accident in 2012, which left him in a coma, and Matt was beside him the entire time. So that just goes to show how close he thought they were. Now, a few years ago, when it was Matt's turn in the hospital, I say Matt's turn in the hospital like everybody gets hospitalized for really serious things. Besides the point, when Matt was in the hospital and the doctors couldn't figure out what was wrong with him, they ran a series of tests and Matt did not tell his family, but he did let Max be there with him. So Ronnie is just like, um, okay, well, if y'all are that close, how do we get here? And Max said, It's been accumulating for about like two years now. And he's sick of carrying their relationship and I understand that. He says that he's always putting in the effort to communicating and trying to make plans and Matt just rejects him. And he says that like he's really devastated and I just feel like, I know they said that they're just best friends, but Max sounds like a rejected girlfriend who's trying to win her man back. Doesn't sound like a best friend sort of situation, but what do I know? Max then drops the bomb that Matt doesn't even allow him into his apartment even though Matt lives alone which makes literally zero sense. So now I'm fully invested and I gotta know what he's hiding. Travis then asks Max, Lord, why was that so hard for me to say? What are some of the reasons that he thinks he's being hidden? And the only one Max can come up with is that Matt just doesn't wanna be friends anymore and he doesn't know how to tell him that. So Max then brings up a very specific creative endeavor, a t-shirt company that they're supposed to be launching really soon. And just remember that. Remember Matt's excitement for launching this t-shirt company with his apparent best friend, his alleged best friend. Travis then asks how Max would feel if Matt said he doesn't want to make music or run the t-shirt company anymore. Max then makes it very clear that that would be the straw that breaks the camel's back. Girl, 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 girl. Oh, girl. Men are so unserious. So deadly unserious. You're going to end your friendship because your friend doesn't want to make mid music and run a mid clothing brand with you? Are you serious? Not for the fact that he's been dissing you and ditching you and not wanting to hang out with you for two years? It's the fact that he doesn't want to do horrible creative endeavors with you? You stupid. Okay. All right then. Priorities are in a weird place right now. 
But Max then tells them that their investigation should begin by talking to their mutual friend, Chris. Ronnie and Travis then ask Max for Matt's socials. I feel like they should have picked different names. Max and Matt is, oh my gosh, it just gives Max and Ruby. Ruby and Max. <laughs> so they ask for Matt's socials, and this is when we find out that Max used to follow Matt, but recently he went back to try and look at his profiles and kind of cyberstalk his bestie or whatever. But it's gone. I did search for it. But nothing came up. Nothing came up. Which, that's weird. So Ronnie and Travis then head out. Travis thinks that Matt has another friend or he's in a relationship with someone and he's living some sort of double life that he's not ready to come clean about. I feel like every time I say about, you, you can tell I'm Canadian, which is really embarrassing for me. Anyways, Ronnie then gets a call from Christopher. And he says that he has a story to tell them. He asks if they can meet up. They agree, so then they head over. Chris then says that he's really glad that they're here to help. He confirms that the three of them used to be really close. They would always go out and have fun. Go on the hunt, as if you will. Meaning you guys would go out and try to meet girls? Try to meet girls. Mm -hmm. But that apparently stopped because Matt said that he was busy and they found out that he would just go out on his own. Chris then gives them a juicy piece of hot gossip and he comes real close and he tells them, I saw Matt the other day. And they're like, okay. I saw him coming out of a restaurant and he was with a brown haired girl who looks like one of Max's ex-girlfriends. What? And they're like, you didn't say anything? You didn't confront him? And he's like, no, I just watched him from afar. He didn't think that it was his place to say or do anything. This guy stinks! Is Max not your friend? I don't know. I just feel like if I saw my friend out on a date with another one of my friend's exes, I'm confronting both of y'all. I'm beating the bricks off both of y'all. And then I'm going and telling the friend. Maybe loyalty just doesn't, it doesn't work like how it used to. Chris then adds that it looked like someone named Maya and he didn't know how to tell Max about it. And he said that- I don't want to spread false, you know, rumors, but it looks like her. And it's like, okay, so you weren't comfortable telling Max, but you're okay telling the host of this TV show who are going to air it and it's going to be seen internationally. That makes sense. Everybody's so creative. We then find out that Maya and Max were together for about three or four years. So it was a pretty significant relationship. And then Chris gives them her phone number so they could give her a call. Chris says that he just wants the situation to be rectified. Ronnie thanks him for talking to them and says that he definitely just dropped a bomb on them. But she does say that that would explain Matt not letting Max into his home if Matt has in fact been dating Max's ex-girlfriend and she's just like over there chilling. They then hit Maya up and ask her to talk and she agrees. They decide to just go and meet her at her job. Ronnie thanks her for meeting up and she fills Maya in on what's been going on. Maya says that Max was a significant boyfriend as they were together for five years and they're still friends but they broke up about four years ago. And I don't know, maybe it's just me. I just feel like it's weird to be friends with your exes. Like if someone is romantically interested in me and they're like yeah i'm friends with my ex like we talk we follow each other on social media we like each other's pictures blah 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 we send each other memes that's weird to me it gives me the ick i'm no longer interested in you get away from me <laughs> like for me once i break up with someone whether we were in a serious relationship just casually dating or like a little fling you're literally dead to me so it's weird to me when people don't have that same attitude i digress Travis then tells Maya that Chris thought that she was dating Matt and she laughs and says that she would never do that. Maya then says that she has no idea what's going on, but it could be that Matt is just now interested in other things. And I'm picking up a little bit of that on social too. So Ronnie's like, oh, he has social media. Maya's like, yeah, he followed me a little while ago. So you'll follow your best friend's ex-girlfriend, but you won't follow your best friend. Mm -mm -mm. It just sounds like Matt is not a good friend. For me, if you have to come on this show, your relationship, whether it's romantic or platonic, it needs to end. You should never be in a secret relationship. Oh my god, are you stupid? Are you dumb? Oh my god. This is stressing me out. So Maya then goes and shows our duo, Matt's page, and it looks like he posted the t-shirt company and started the t-shirt company, but there's no mention of Max on Matt's page or on the t-shirt company's page at all. It gives Max no credit, so it seems like he's doing some shady shit and he's trying to just cut Max out of their business. So they say goodbye and they head out. Ronnie said that she wants to know what's going on in that apartment and shit, girl, me too. I want to know too.
Travis then says that they don't have enough information to go back to Max until they talk to Matt. So the next day, next morning, they're in the car. They still have not heard from Matt. They decide to just give him a call and he answers right away. They fill him in a bit and they ask him if they can speak and just ask him some more questions. He says that- I'm at home right now. If you, if you, can, if you can come here. So they're like, what the fuck? So you're gonna let randoms into your house, but you won't let your best friend into your house. That's suspicious. That's weird. They arrive at his place and everything looks normal, except for his fit. Why are you wearing business casual clothes and you're just chilling at home? Who chills at home in jeans? Red flag number one, something is off with Matt. Why are you chilling in jeans and a turtleneck and a blazer? Are you okay? The answer is no, he's not okay, but you're going to find out why he's not okay in just a second. So Travis then tells Matt that Max lied to him about what the show is, then proceeds to tell him the truth. So then Ronnie confronts him about the social media and the t-shirt company, which now looks like a complete solo venture. And Travis then says, it's weird that you let us in your apartment, but you won't let your best friend of 25 years in your apartment. Matt then says, I'd rather like talk to him personally about that. This man is a fucking weirdo. Because if you would rather talk to him about all this personally, then why haven't you? Be fucking for real. Then Matt asks if they're being serious right now, and Travis is like, what the hell is wrong with you? He doesn't say that, but in my mind, that's what he says. What the hell is wrong with you? We wouldn't be here if this was a joke. So Matt then agrees that Max can come over. Ronnie then heads outside to greet Max, gives him a big old hug. Ronnie just seems like she gives very warm, very welcoming, very motherly vibes, but not motherly in like a mammy type of way. Just like she's very nurturing, like she makes people feel really safe really quickly, and I really like that. Travis seems like he'd beat you up at any second, and I like that too. <laughs> Ronnie reminds Max that this is his moment to confront Matt and ask him all of the questions that he needs answers to, so they head inside. It's a very awkward hello. There's no hugs, no handshakes, no daps, nothing. I don't know what white guys do when they greet each other, but they didn't do anything. And Matt does not seem happy to see him, which is weird. But we've already established Matt is a weirdo in his jeans and blazer and turtleneck for chilling at home. So Travis then gives Max an update on what they found via the investigation, specifically the stuff about Chris thinking that Maya and Matt were dating, but Maya confirmed that that's not true. But then he says that Maya did say something alarming. Then Travis proceeds to tell Max about the social media profile, everything that they saw on Matt's page, but more specifically, how Matt started the t-shirt company without him. So when Max looks at him and says, Are you taking like my ideas and running with them? Absolutely not. But it's like, yeah, that's what you did. Matt then comes up with some BS and he says that sometimes they just talk about things so much that nothing ever ends up happening. And so he wanted to actually start and be like, yeah, we're doing this. And he wanted to surprise Matt. Which I'm like, you wanted to surprise your best friend who you plan on starting a business with, with the business that y'all said you were going to start together. You stupid. Were you going to surprise him with his cut of the money made from the business or no? Okay. <laughs> All right. So Max then says like, that makes no sense. I don't understand that. That was our sort of vision it together. Still is. I think it still is our thing together. But he just wanted to show what he can do. With a lie detective determined that was a lie. Okay. Then Matt says that it was the right thing to do because he has a better grasp on the internet stuff. Which, what does that mean? Are you calling your best friend stupid? But then he kind of sort of admits that he was in the wrong and apologizes kind of sort of. I totally admit I'm in the wrong. I was in the wrong. I say kind of sort of because he doesn't actually say sorry. And to me, if you don't actually say sorry, that means you're not sorry. So Travis then interjects and says that Ronnie and I were just caught off guard by you being so willing to invite us into your home, but you've been so hesitant to invite Max into your home. So what's the deal with that? That's weird. Matt then admits that he has been hiding something. Well, in case someone from Max, he says that he is seeing someone and her name is Lauren. So Travis then asks Matt if Max knows about Lauren. Matt says no. Travis then asks if Lauren knows about Max, and Max says yes, she does. Travis then asks, Does she live here? Yeah. So I was like, Where is she? Why has she just been hiding somewhere this whole time? That's weird. So Ronnie is then confused and is like, If Max knew you were in a happy relationship, he would have been happy for you. And Matt says, I still don't know if he'll be accepting of Lauren. Are you going to tell us she's black? You don't know if Max will accept her. Uh, like, what are you about to say right now? 
So then Matt says that he would love to bring her out right now if that's cool with everybody. And it's like, why wouldn't everybody be cool with that? If she's the reason you've been hiding Max, like, yeah, bring her out. So Ronnie and Travis look very concerned and just stare in shock and disbelief as Matt brings out Lauren. I am not sure how these hosts kept their composure. The way I would have busted out laughing and had to leave the room would have happened so fast. I would have quit my job if someone said, yeah, let me go get my girlfriend and this is what happens. This grown ass man brings out a fully dressed, fully clothed sex doll. Max, this is my girlfriend, Lauren. And then sits the sex doll on his lap. Everybody's so creative. See how different that looks? What the fuck? Max then says that he understands why Matt was struggling with being more open. <laughs> this can't be serious. This can't be for real. This can't be happening. How is this real? Max then asks, does she talk to you? And Matt says, we communicate. And then he kind of gets mad at Max and says, You can talk to Lauren too, dude. Like, she's not in the room. Like, we're all in the room right here. But you're acting like she's not even in the room. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> be serious. Please be so for real. Be so for real right now. Travis is dumbfounded. And his facial expressions are going crazy. Even though it's clear he's trying to keep his composure, the composure is not keeping him. Ronnie then decides to take the lead on the conversation and she asks how did you and lauren meet like how did this relationship develop it's a sex doll he bought the sex doll she it's a doll he can't okay okay so we're just pretending like this is real like he's in a real relationship like it's normal to be in a relationship with inanimate objects okay all right we're just we're just going with it just for now i guess so Matt then says that he was living such a fast life. He was chasing money. And when he was sick in the hospital, he realized that he needed someone he could trust. Trust. <laughs> <laughs> then Matt is like, yeah. Well, of course I trust you. But we're not romantic. <laughs> I wanted someone I could romantically trust, and Lauren was the only one consistently by my side. Oh, brother! It's because she's a doll. She can't get up and walk away like a woman would. So she has no choice but to be by your side. She's a doll. <laughs> like, what the fuck is happening? So Travis is still looking dumbfounded while Ronnie is nodding like she understands what he's saying and like she understands where he's coming from. She then asks what their conversations look like. Like, what are you, what are you talking to her about? They talk about nothing. Because it's a doll. He talks to the doll. And then Matt says that they talk about, and then he starts to cry. Because that's how much of a positive way that this doll has impacted his life he said that they talk about how he's going to be a better person and everything really and he said that their relationship just completely changes a person max looks stressed he looks stressed the hell out ronnie then says that it sounds like lauren gave matt what he needed when he needed it most this is the thing i understand why she is trying to be so understanding and empathetic but at the same time ronnie girl i just need you to be so fucking for real it's a man with a doll we cannot act like this is normal. And if he really believed that there was nothing wrong with his relationship with Lauren, then he wouldn't have been hiding the doll from his best friend for two years. He's just a shady guy. And I feel like this is just the icing on the cake. Like this friendship does not need to continue. Ronnie then asks if he loves Lauren and he says, yes. And she says, okay, well, if you love her, why didn't you introduce her to your friends? Like, were you afraid of judgment or laughter? Because let's be real, not everyone is gonna understand and it's not their job to, but was that what you were afraid of? And Matt says, yes. So it's like, there's some awareness there. He understands that this is not normal. He understands that he should not be doing this with this doll. Max then whispers, this is insane. This is insane. And he's 100% right. This is some crazy shit. Travis then gets it together. His shock is worn off and he's like, oh my God, I'm. this is my job. I need to host right now. So then he asks a question. He said, Max, is your problem that he put his romantic pursuits ahead of your friendship? And it's like, um, no, babe. 
The problem is that his best friend would rather have a fake relationship with a sex doll than real life women or even his real life best friend of 20 something years. They have been friends longer than I have been alive. That's the problem. Max then says that he's just upset about the lengths Matt went to to hide all of this. Travis then asks, Does your family know about Lauren? Yeah. Which is shocking. I can't imagine bragging to my family like, yes, I'm in a relationship with this great person. They've changed my whole life and I'm crying. It makes me so emotional. And then I bring the person over and the person is a sex doll. Lord have mercy. Mm-mm-mm. Matt then says that he would rather not talk about his family since this is about Max and I just feel like this man is so controlling. And it makes sense why his most valuable relationship in his life is with something that he can completely control and will not talk back to him and will not give him attitude ever. Travis then asks what the future of their friendship looks like moving forward. Matt says that he's asking for forgiveness and from here on out he will be completely honest. And Max says that this is just a lot. And then he gets up and walks into a random room, very clearly upset and trying to process everything that has just happened. So Travis follows him into the room because Travis cannot be trusted with Matt and the doll. <laughs> so Max goes and he's crying on a bed. And Max says that he feels like a fucking idiot. But I have to say, Max isn't the idiot in this situation by any means. I'm not going to say who is, but... Then we go back to Ronnie and Matt, where Matt is fixing Lauren, the sex doll. He's fixing her clothes and smiling at her. This man is off his fucking rocker. Ronnie then asks him what Lauren likes to do, and he says that she likes to eat out. So it's like, so you take the doll out? So is that who Chris saw you with and he thought that it was Maya? I would be so fucking offended if I was Maya and I watched this and I was like, damn, Chris thought that I was that ugly ass sex doll. Then he says that- I went vegetarian after I met Lauren. Like she's obviously vegetarian. Obviously. And Ronnie says, that's great. That's great. <laughs> and then she looks back to the area where Travis and Max are clearly hoping that they will come back into the room soon because she can't do this for much longer. Do y'all think that he takes the doll out to eat all the time or do you think that the doll just stays in the house do you think that like when he goes to work when he runs errands he brings the doll in the car do you think someone has ever seen the doll in the car and is like what the fuck is that i just have so many questions that i would never ask this man because i would never want to talk to this man i'd never want to see this man in real life ever 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 there's most men i wouldn't like to see in real life but he's at the top of the list but we then flash back to Max and Travis, and Max says that he wants to be mad, but he just feels really sorry for Matt. And that's a good person with a good heart. So Travis and Max then head back out into the living room, and Max says that he just wants Matt to be happy. Matt says he apologizes, he and Lauren both apologize, but he doesn't say sorry, so he's not really apologizing, he's just saying the words, we apologize. Matt says that he should not have hidden Max from Lauren or Lauren from Max. And I want, honestly, to just live my truth. Maybe you shouldn't want to do that. J just a thought. Ronnie then says that Max is a wonderful friend. I hope that you two can remain close. His acceptance of all of this has been amazing, but... I think that Travis and I can go. So they can figure everything else out on their own. And it's clear that they just need to get out of there. I just know as soon as they walked out, they just looked at each other like, what the fuck? I know they were laughing. I know they were cackling. I, I know it was a mess and I wish they would have showed us. Ronnie and Travis, please let me know how you handled this. I would like to have your composure, especially Ronnie. Travis, you're just like me. Can't control our faces for anything. Inside the apartment, Max says that it's just a lot to process. And Matt says that he hopes that there's no animosity for Lauren. Oh, Lord. And he hopes that Lauren and Max can form a friendship. You stupid. So you're still more concerned about your doll than you are about your friend. That's fucked up. Max says, okay. And then he says that he's also going to head out. He's not going to stay around for this anymore. Matt is then like, are we going to shake hands? Whatever. So Max walks over, shakes his hand. And then Matt puts out the doll's hand and expects Max to shake the hand. And Max just looks at it and looks at him and is like, that's going to take some time. And then Matt seems mad. This man is not okay. But also, like, I wouldn't shake that hand. I wouldn't touch that doll. 
because I know exactly where that doll has been, and I don't want your nasty germs all over me. No, thank you. So Matt, Ronnie, and Travis then talk outside the apartment, and Max says that he doesn't know what's going to happen right now, because obviously Matt has a really good heart. Something's twisted right now, I don't know. Ronnie says that you can care for Matt from a distance. Like, you don't have to be right there all up in his shit. Max says that he thinks that that's going to be the move. He thanks them for their help, hugs them both, and they all say goodbye. Ronnie is like, yeah, I'm glad that Matt got to say his truth or whatever, but I'm more happy for Max to be free from wondering. And now he's able to make an active choice about what his life will look like. Travis then summed up this whole episode perfectly, and he says that Matt got so used to manipulating situations just like he does with the doll that yep. he forgot Max is a real person. And I want to dive in just into this statement a little bit right now, because the men who go on reality TV and confess their love for dolls only make it clear that they see women as an object. They get frustrated and defeated that real women have thoughts, feelings, and opinions and won't just do everything that they say in the same way that a doll does because a doll has no choice. It's a doll. These men don't like that women have a choice and have a voice and that's a scary reality. But with Matt, it's clear that he just doesn't like when people have any choice or free will, hence the way he completely excluded Max from the brand that they were to create together so he could make all the decisions himself, he could do everything himself, and the way he got mad when Max wouldn't shake the doll's hand, even though it clearly had his dick in it at some point. For Matt, this is more about control and manipulation. It's not about him actually feeling love. Real love with a human can't be replicated in a love with a doll. Travis then says that their job here is done. The little follow-up that they give us, we find out that Max and Matt have stopped pursuing all of their passion projects together. They no longer communicate, and I think that that's for the best. Then we see pictures of Matt taking his doll to the beach, which is crazy. So as one does, after the episode was all done, I ran to Reddit to see what people had to say. And apparently, Matt and this sex doll of his have been seen on dating apps which is crazy because it's like, so you, even though you have this girlfriend who you love so much, this doll, you are still on dating apps looking for someone else to join the fucked up fantasy that you have. So it's clear you understand that that's not a real relationship and you're still craving real intimacy with other people. But it, again, it says that they have been spotted on dating apps and around town for the past three years. Lord have mercy. So it seems like Max was really the only one who didn't know that this was going on in Matt's life, which is embarrassing and also heartbreaking for him. People on there then also brought up some points that I agree with. It's clear that this is not normal, and for everyone on set to just act like this was normal did Matt a huge disservice. They should have been honest with him, and they should have got him psychological help. Today drained me. That was the first episode we have covered of help. I'm in a secret relationship. And if there's one thing that you should do over the holidays is watch some of the mess that goes down on the show because I promise you it's messier than Catfish. I think the show is good. The only thing that's a little bit off for me is the pacing. It just seems a little bit slow up until the end, but we can work with that. That's why I make these reviews. If you like the video, make sure to like, make sure to comment, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification so you're aware of every single time that I upload. I need to hear your thoughts about the show, number one, and also two, about this episode in particular about Matt and his relationship with his sex doll. I need to know what you think. That this was crazy. <laughs> oh my god, people like Matt are so scary. They're so scary. But I thank you so much for watching. If there are other shows that you want to see me cover, make sure to drop it down in the comments. If there's other episodes of this show that you want to see me cover, make sure to drop that down in the comments as well. I thank you so very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.